everybody, Jesus loves you. My name's Cody, and you are watching the Friday episode of the Christian News Show thing that I do. <laughs> and the first story of the day is about Comic-Con. More specifically, we're talking about the Christian Comic Art Society, which has panels at the Comic-Con. And to be completely honest, I'm just kind of excited that that's a thing. And pretty much what the CCAS is, it's just a group of people who make comics for a living who happen to be Christian. The group consists of artists like Sergio Crello, which if you don't know who he is, go check him out. Go check out the Action Bible, it's pretty much amazing. And other artists that are part of this are like Christopher Cole, who did the Book of Revelation, and then Billy Tushi, who did A Child Was Born. So pretty much what's so awesome about this, they're doing panels, like spiritual themes in comics, which isn't really like a Christian panel, but it's going to be a panel that's like, hey, there's religious stuff in comics, let's talk about it, which is awesome in its own right. But Sunday morning, they're also going to be doing a little devotional for anybody that wants to come, which that is awesome. They're bringing Christianity to a convention, and for that, that is so, so cool. Also, they're going to have a Q&A. So pretty much, if you guys are Comic Con, you need to go check these guys out. Wish I could, but see, CAS, you guys are amazing. And I know that Philip DeFranco already talked about my next story, but it needs to be spread by everyone because it's so cool. For anybody who doesn't know what Kickstarter is, it's like a giant charity website. People want to build things and make things, and so they ask for money there, and people give the money. Usually they get perks for giving a certain amount of money to whatever. So that being said, Ooh Yeah is a console that has a Kickstarter, and it was trying to raise $950,000. As of right now, it has almost 35,000 backers, who have donated on almost four and a half million dollars. With all that, you have to ask, what is it so great? And that's because it's going to be a really open platform. It's going to be only a hundred dollars to buy, and almost anybody can program it that knows anything about programming video games. See, a lot of consoles right now, it takes a lot of programming skills, and you have to really know what you're doing to program. This is going to work on an Android platform, so that makes it just easy to make games like any other phone app would. Now, I think we all hope that the quality is going to be a little bit better than mobile video games, but it means it's going to be really easy to program these. It's not that hard for people who have some schooling in video games to create games for a phone. So what this means for Christians, though, is that it's going to be easy and not really all that expensive to make video games like it's been. It's really hard to get a Christian video game out there on like Xbox or Nintendo or something like that. But having an open platform like this means that Christians who have some programming skills in video games can make a video game without having to worry about expenses, without having to worry about trying to get in. It's going to be really easy for Christian video games to exist. That by no means means that the quality is going to go up at all for Christian games, but we can have our hopes. Pretty much the only guideline for having a game on this console is that some part of that gameplay is free, whether it be a demo or if it's just a free game. So not only are we seeing something that's groundbreaking and historical with Kickstarter, but we might be seeing a historical time for Christians, which I don't know if anyone else is thinking about this like I am, but I'm excited. I can see a lot of good games coming out of this console, whether they be Christian or not. I just see good gaming coming out of something where it's made for the players to keep the console alive and to keep programmers alive because it seems like you can only have these elite programmers to make video games anymore and it can't just be anybody like it used to. So again, this is historical. A lot of you probably don't care, but I'm a gamer and anything that can give us Christian gaming that doesn't suck and isn't terrible and cheesy, I'm, I'm really excited for it. As always, there's a link in the description below if you want to go check that out. And I also put another link saying that video games are plummeting for the last seven months, so it could be the console that we need to kind of rejuvenate video games in general. I do know that in the Final Ultra poll they didn't include used games, and I'm sure that that's hurting the economy a little bit for video game companies. But I do know that newer consoles are going to not let you get used games, which will be interesting. I'm just kind of excited for the consoles of video games in general. And I feel like this console could just rejuvenate how people feel about video game consoles again. It's not going to be all this hardcore gaming stuff. It's going to be something where just anybody can play, whether they be a hardcore gamer or if they just like playing games every once in a while. It's going to be so free and open that anyone who has an idea for a game is going to be able to make a game. And from that, we go into our final story, which I'm really curious to see what you guys have to say about this. As of late, there's been a growing number of people going to bars to have their Bible studies. Obviously, within the American church, a lot of people are looking down upon this, but I kind of think it's a good idea. A lot of the pastors are saying it's not even about the beer. Most people that go don't even drink beer, they drink a water, but they have it at a bar because people who are at a bar usually are in need of Jesus. And if you think about it, Jesus went to all the like, hurting people. He went to people that were in need of him. And the reason that I say it's a good idea is because of this. You have the people that are drinking away their sorrows at the bar, and you have the people that are drinking to party. And they're obviously both doing very sinful things. One is wilting in their own sorrow, and the other one is obviously doing 
other sinful things that are kind of obvious. To me, those are the kind of people that you kind of, you want them to get the Bible, and they're people that are never going to go to a church, so why doesn't the pastor just go, hey, I'm going to come have a beer with you guys. And I mean, these pastors aren't doing organized Bible studies, they're, you know, like on Monday nights or something, and it's just a pastor and a few people going to have a beer. But 20 to 30 people are going to these things, which makes that awesome. 30 people, some of them aren't Christian, some of them would be Muslim, some of them would be Jewish, some of them would even be atheists. And one of the examples I got of why an atheist went to the Bible study was because his wife was Christian and she wanted him to go to a Bible study. He found this. He said, is that okay? She was like, yeah, as long as you go to a Bible study, I don't care what you do. So he'd go have a beer and he would have good talks about the Bible. And it wasn't something where they argue or anything like that. They just focus straight on the word. And again, I think this is an amazing idea. Most people won't step foot in a church because it's uptight and it's uncomfortable. If you go to a bar, that's one of those comfortable places for some people to be. But again, on the other hand, there are a lot of people that are like, drinking is against Christianity, you shouldn't be doing that. So, I'm going to throw two verses at you. I want to know what you guys think about drinking in Christianity and having a Bible study in a bar of all places. Do you think that's appropriate? Do you think that's inappropriate? Let me know. Comment in the comment section below with your answer or a video response would be awesome to this. Um, I'm going to give you two verses today. And since there are two Bible verses today, I wanted to get my Bible out just to make sure that I get those verses right. So, you know that was awesome. And the first verse today is Matthew 11, 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. So you do have one instance where Jesus was called a drunkard. He was drinking, obviously, and he was around a lot of people that were drinking, and he said it was okay. But then you have Ephesians 5.18, which says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. So, I mean, I just kind of want to know what you guys think. Do you think that it's appropriate to have a Bible study in a bar or not? I think what the Bible says is you can drink and that's okay. Don't get drunk to a point where you're going to do really stupid things. But it's not this terrible thing to drink. Anyways, again, let me know what you guys' answer is. That's all that I've understood in the news today. So, in closing, haters keep hating. Christians keep praying. To everybody like and subscribe. I will see you later and God bless.